you should have watched the video where I was proving an if and only if statement. So an if and only if statement involved two statements connected by if and only if. In this particular problem, we have three statements. And what we're trying to do is show that if I choose any two of these, I have a bunch of if and only if statements. So what I've done is label these three statements that I'm trying to show are equivalent with one, two, and three. So to show that they're equivalent, we have to show that one is equivalent to two. We have to show, sorry, pie in my mind, uh, to two. I want to show that one is equivalent to three. And I want to show that two is equivalent to three. Okay? So if and only if is really similar to equivalence. Okay? If you take two propositions that are logically equivalent, join them by if and only if, you're going to get a tautology. It's always going to be true. So we're trying to show that these are equivalent, which means we're trying to prove if and only if statements between all of them. So if you saw in our last if and only if statement that we proved, um, you can see that this would be a lot of work. We'd actually have six uh, statements to prove because to prove uh, one implies two or one if and only if two, right? We'd have to prove one implies two and we'd have to, impli we'd have to prove that two implies one. And then same story here, we'd have to improve that one implies three and three implies one. And then here we'd have to prove two implies three and three implies one. This would take a long time. We could do it, but we want to do the most efficient way of proving these equivalences. So if you go to page 88 in your textbook, I'd encourage you to read through the justification for just proving these three implications. So we've cut down our work. Instead of having six implications to prove, we've cut it down to three. And I'll let you kind of piece together, see if you can make the connection of why, that, why is this sufficient to prove all of this. Okay, so think about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and prove each of these three statements for you. And then uh, I'll have proven that it, they are equivalent. All of these three statements are equivalent. So let me just do a, you know, a little breakdown of this particular one. So if I want to prove statement one implies statement two, what I'm trying to show is that if x is rational, okay, this means x is an element of the rational numbers. Q, scripted Q like that, means rational number, okay? x is rational implies x divided by 2 is a rational number. Okay, that's our first statement that we want to prove. The next statement that we want to prove, 2 implies 3, we're trying to show that if x over 2 is rational, then 3x minus 1 is rational. And then the third statement we're trying to prove oops, is that if, uh, let's see, 1 implies 3. If x is rational, then 3x minus 1 is rational. Okay, So now it's a lot more manageable than all those six uh, implications we were going to prove. So that's exciting. Um, so let's go ahead and, and work through these three implications and see if we can prove them. Um, let's see, what do we know about rational numbers? Well, rational numbers is a subset of the real numbers. Um, it includes things like integers, but it also includes things like 3 halves or 1 seventh or a uh, square root of 4, right? A square root of 4. Sometimes they get tricked in thinking that's irrational, but square root of 4 is 2, so it's a rational number. So a number is rational if it's a real number and it can be written as the quotient of two integers. So a and b are integers. So any number that we can write in this way will be a rational number. So we're going to need to know and understand that definition to prove all of these conditional statements that involve rational numbers. So as you've noticed, definitions and understanding of these logical connectives is really important to structuring a proof. So we want to prove 
this conditional statement. I'm going to give it a go with a direct proof here and see if we can make that happen. Um, so I'm just doing a sketch right now, making sure that I can piece together the logic uh, before I write it up. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to start, I'm trying a direct proof, right? See if it works. So I'm going to start by assuming my hypothesis. In this case, it's that x is a rational number. Okay, now what do we know if x is a rational number? Well, we know it lives in this set, so I can write it as the quotient of two integers. Well, then what does that tell me about x divided by 2? Well, then x divided by 2 must be a divided by b divided by 2, which is equivalent to, right, dividing fractions multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, a divided by 2b, right? Okay, well, now things are looking pretty good for us because a is an integer, 2b is an integer, so now I've shown that x over 2 is written as the quotient of two integers, therefore x divided by 2 is a rational number, and we're done. Not too bad. Okay, so let's just start writing this up. This is just the one portion of the three, right? But I'm going to go ahead and write this portion up uh, before getting into the other implications. So I'm going to make it clear to my reader that I'm going to start my proof. And I want to set up a little bit of background information for my reader so that they know where I'm going. So I'm going to go ahead and let them know that I'm trying to show something is equivalent. So we will show, we will show for any real number, for any real number x. So we're letting our reader know what variable we're using and what uh, declaration we're using for that variable, the following statements are equivalent. Uh, equivalent. Okay, so if we go back and remember those statements, I'm going to go ahead and list them. So our statement one was that x is rational. Our statement two was that x over 2 is rational, and our statement 3 is that 3x minus 1 is rational. So to prove these statements are equivalent, so I'm going to set up the implications that I'm going to prove so that they know where I'm going. we will prove the following conditionals. And your reader should understand the logic behind this and know that by proving these three uh, conditional statements, you have proven these equivalencies. So I'm going to label them one. If x is rational, then x over 2 is rational. Okay, so the second statement was that 1 implies 3, right? If x is rational, then 3x minus 1 is rational. And our third one was that and our third statement that we're trying to prove here is that if x over 2 is rational, then 3x minus 1 is rational. So let me make sure that I've gotten these statements correct here and then I wrote out here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and write up that first one that we just proved. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna break it up for my reader so that they know what statement I'm proving and give it make it a little bit easier to read. So assume we already declared x to be a real number, so we're just gonna start with our direct proof. Assume x is rational. Then x equals a over b. Well, let me let me justify why I'm writing this. Then by definition of rational numbers.
x is equal to a over b for some integers a and b. Notice x over 2 is equal to a divided by b divided by 2, which is equal to a divided by 2b. Because a and, well, let's see, a, b, and 2, right? So we're going to use that. a, b, 2 are integers. This shows x over 2 is the quotient of two integers. Thus, by definition of rational numbers, x over 2 is rational. All right. Now, the other two statements are proved really similarly, so I'm just going to go ahead and add those and write them up, okay? You might want to just pause this video, see if you can structure and do some scratch work for those two other ones, but I'm just going to go through and, um, and write them up for you, okay? So we're trying to prove now x rational implies 3x minus 1 rational. So we're going to start, assume x is rational. Then, just like we did above, x equals a and b, where a and b, a and b are integers. Notice, 3x minus 1 is equal to 3 times a over b minus 1. Now, as it stands right here, we don't have this looking like the quotient of two integers. So we need to just do a little bit of algebra to show that this is uh, the quotient of two integers. So... So we're going to do a little bit of algebra here to write this as the quotient of two integers. So in order to combine this one and this other expression, I'm going to get a common denominator of b. I can rewrite one as b over b, their equivalent. Now I have them divided into equal portions so I can combine my numerators. And now I'm done. I have written 3x minus 1 as the quotient of two integers. So I'm going to just explain that since 3 a, b are integers, we have shown, you know, it'd probably be better here to say 3a minus b and b are integers. We have shown that 3x minus 1 is the quotient of two integers. So then we'll just say, by definition of rational numbers, three x minus one is rational. Okay, now let's do that final third proof here. So that third one, we are trying to prove that if x over two is rational, then three x or minus 1 is rational. So we're going to start with a direct proof again. We're just going to assume that x over 2 is rational. Then x over 2 is equal to a over b for some integers a and b. Notice how I'm using um, using a and b in each portion. Now that's just because they're not overlapping statements, okay? Like they're like your local variables and in your specific class, okay? Um, but if it bugs you, you could always use different variable names because there is a lot of places where you do need to be careful about that.
Um, so, multiplying both sides. So I want to get something about x because I'm trying to get to 3x minus 1. So I'm going to manipulate this just to get x. Um, so this, this is equivalent. Right? I just multiply both sides by 2. Equivalent 2x equals 2a over b. Then 3x minus 1 is equal to 3 times 2a over b minus 1 is equal to 6a over b minus 1. And that's equal to 6a over b minus b over b, which is equal to 6a minus b divided by b. Those are both integers. 6a. Usually you don't start a sentence with a number, so um, since 6a minus b and b are integers, we have shown 3x minus 1 is the quotient of two integers. Thus, by definition of rational numbers, three x minus one is rational. I'm going to close it up here for them. Hence, we have shown one two, three, which demonstrates the equivalency of one, two, three. QED, we're done.